guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be rating movie Draculas. Dracula has been played by a lot of people, and so I thought I would rate 15 different actors who have played Dracula. So here are 15 Draculas and what I think of them. The first Dracula that I am going to be rating is Dracula from Hotel Transylvania. He is the only animated Dracula on this list. I thought, hey, why not? He's iconic with the kids these days. He's funny. He's not your stereotypical vampire. Obviously, he's made for kids. So out of 10, I'd probably rate him like a 4 or 5. He's not bad, but he's not one of my favorites either. He's kind of just there. He's funny, but he's not scary. So probably a 4 or 5. The next Dracula is Jack Palance, who played Dracula in Dan Curtis's Dracula from 1973, I believe. I've only seen this movie one time, so I don't really have a lot of knowledge to go off of in his performance. But I'd say maybe like a four. Um, I think he did a good job as Dracula, but some of his facial expressions were like over the top, and I'm like, eh. <laughs> Like, why do you look like that? <laughs> why are you making that face? Uh, so me personally, probably, again, a four or five. Uh, he's not horrible, but he's not great either. He's kind of like a meh in between. The next is John Carradine. He played Dracula in House of Frankenstein, House of Dracula, and I think three others. Also with this case, I haven't seen much of his version of Dracula, but I have seen the House of Dracula and I think he did a pretty good job. I'd probably go like a six. Uh, he doesn't really look like your stereotypical Dracula. He more looks like Vincent Price as Dracula. His films are in black and white, but he has, you can clearly tell his hair is not black. Um, so he kind of looks like a, you know, a butler dressed as Dracula. That's just my personal opinion. <laughs> the next is Duncan Regeer. Um, he played Dracula in Monster Squad, uh, from 1987. Same year Lost Boys came out. Woo-woo! Now, with Duncan, he went for your very stereotypical Dracula with the accent and blah, 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 sort of thing. Uh, most of the monsters in Monster Squad are very stereotypical of the monster. Um, I think he did a pretty good job. Of course, he's wearing, like, your stereotypical, like, Dracula costume from Spirit Halloween. Which I think they could at least try to make him a little fancier, but it is Monster Squad, so... You know, that's, that's how it be. Um, so for me... Maybe... A three. Uh, it is quite low. Um, but he went, like, stereotype all the way up. <laughs> like, he was just stereotyping it up. <laughs> he wasn't bad, but he wasn't my favorite. And Monster Squad is not one of my favorite movies. It is a good movie. Um... But he's like a tiny part in the movie. Like, he's not, you know, the main bad guy. I mean, he is, but he's not. Um, so I'd say probably three or four. The next Dracula is George Hamilton. He played Dracula in Love at First Bite. Uh, this is like uh, making fun of Dracula. So he is Dracula, but it's more humor. Um, you know, your stereotypical guy in a castle. Um, I actually really liked this version. Like a seven. Maybe even an eight. Uh, I thought he did a really good job and it made me laugh. And the overall movie is stupid humor, but I love stupid humor. So I'm like, bring it on, man. I like it. <laughs> so he is definitely near the top for me. And he did the stereotypical Dracula look as well, but he really pulled it off. And it, it's a lot more better, a lot more better. It's better quality than the Monster Squad costume. Uh, it's very similar in shape and size and color. Um, but uh, better quality, um, or it, it just looks better on George Hamilton. <laughs> the next Dracula is Thomas Kreshman from Dracula 3D, or Argento's Dracula is also known. This movie is not that good. <laughs> the special effects are bad. He does a good job of playing the Dracula, and there are some good moments in the film, but an, as an overall film, it's not good. I do like his portrayal. I don't love it, but I do like it. Um, if we're talking overall movie, probably like a three. If we're talking his portrayal, maybe a six. Um, I liked his Dracula, but 
but added with the effects, it just wasn't the same. The storyline was interesting. Um, very similar to your basic Dracula movie. Uh, the audio in that movie was horrible. Uh, but I'm just, that's, we're not talking about the movies, we're talking about the Draculas. So Dracula, probably a six. Um, if we're talking, uh, combined with everything, probably a three or four. The next is Dominic Purcell, who played Dracula in Blade, uh, Trinity. He gets a one because his Dracula is horrible. I mean, he, he doesn't fit any of the Dracula stereotypes, which I guess is good in a way, but also it doesn't feel like Dracula. Um, and he turns into a giant monster thing, which Dracula does not do. So they basically used Dracula's name, but made him more like a monster, which I guess, hey, why not? Um, I just don't like his portrayal at all. I like him in The Flash and stuff like that in different roles, but as Dracula, he just doesn't fit for me. His, the whole performance is awkward, so one. And I love Blade, and Blade Trinity has Ryan Reynolds in it, and Ryan Reynolds, like, saved that movie from being a complete garbage fire. But I don't like this Dracula at all, so one. <laughs> The next Dracula is Gerard Butler from Dracula 2000. This movie is also not that great. It's not the worst movie. It has some, like, faces you'd recognize. But it's not... It's not the best. It's not the worst. It's kind of like a meh. I'd give him, like, a five. He's not your stereotypical Dracula. He, you know, looks like a supermodel. Has nice hair. The movie is not perfect. But the movie is not horrible like Blade Trinity. Uh, so I would say probably for him a five or six because um, he's not bad, not great. So he's like a middle ground for me. The next Dracula is Frank Langella from Dracula 1979. I think he did a good job with the facial expressions and the overall idea and like the main scene where him and the human get together is kind of, it's filmed cool. Um, but I wouldn't say he's like top notch uh, Dracula actor for me, at least. Um, I'd probably say a four, maybe a five. I am rating a lot of these Draculas <laughs> in the middle of the road because they aren't like spectacular. Like I wasn't wowed. I'm like, oh my God, that's Dracula is so good. But I wasn't like, this is complete trash. Well, maybe some of them, but he's like, he did a good job, but he wasn't, he didn't wow me. I didn't go, wow. <laughs> so I'd probably say a five. The next Dracula is Richard Roxburgh from Van Helsing in 2004. I think he did an amazing job. I love this movie. It's, of course, it's not perfect. Some of the acting, you're like, huh? It's got a lot of famous faces in it, and I kind of just like the idea of him making, like, an army of children that are creepy bat things. Um, I wouldn't say it's my favorite movie ever, but it's pretty good, and I think his portrayal of Dracula is awesome. <laughs> I love his accent and just the way the character carries himself and that whole ballroom scene where he's dancing with the main girl like it's pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, so I'd probably rate him like a seven maybe even an eight. Um, of course I wouldn't say his portrayal is perfect. Um, it's very hard to get a portrayal exactly perfect in anything. And perfection is hard to come by, and for some people, perfection it means something else than what it would mean for me. Um, but for me, I'd say like a seven. Um, I just like that movie. <laughs> the next is Leslie Nielsen. Uh, he played Dracula in Dracula Dead and Loving It. Uh, this is another humorous take on Dracula. It's basically all humor. It's got a few, you know, familiar faces in it. He does not look like Dracula. He looks like Leslie Nielsen in a Dracula costume. And the movie's got stupid humor, but I love stupid humor. So like, I'm always like, yeah, I thought it was hilarious. Not everyone thinks it's funny. I think it was. Um, and if you like stupid humor mixed with Dracula, then it's the perfect movie for you. Um, I think he did a very good job. I'd probably give him a seven or eight as well. Not on looks because costume is good, but you know, hair is white and it's not his accent is not good, <laughs> but um, otherwise I, I thought it was a pretty good movie. So I'd probably say a seven or eight. The next Dracula is Gary Oldman from Dracula 1992. Probably say like a six, maybe a seven. Um, he's also not one of my favorites. Um, he's not bad, 
Um, and they, they based a lot of it on the book, where he goes from, like, old to young. Um, and some of the aspects in the movie are in the book. It changed a few things. But one thing that I don't like is the reincarnated lovers trope. That's one of my least favorite tropes known to man. Because it's just like, you gotta love someone for them, not because they look like someone else. So that's a big part of this take on Dracula is the reincarnated lover thing where he, his one true love jumped out a window and now, you know, hundreds of years later, he finally finds her again through Jonathan's picture and whatever else. And Keanu Reeves is in this movie, baby Keanu Reeves. I don't think his acting in this movie is very good. Some of the scenes with Keanu and the vampires is, 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 are good. And I think overall the movie is pretty awesome. There are some things I would change, some of the costumes, I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> but yeah, I'd probably say a six. Uh, it's not perfect, it's not bad, but um, yeah. The next Dracula is Christopher Lee, who played Dracula in like nine movies, I believe, for Hammer films, um, from like 1950 into the 70s. He is a nine or a ten. He is one of my favorite Draculas ever. I, when I think of Dracula, I think of Bela Lugosi or Christopher Lee. Uh, I've seen, I believe, every single Hammer film Dracula movie. And my favorite Van Helsing is Peter Cushing. Awesome. He's awesome. Let me tell you, he's awesome. My favorite Van Helsing. By far. And I think Christopher Lee, is, he just fit the role. And I liked his movies. They were kind of dumb. And in every single one, he died and then came back to life in the next one. Which... All right, he got killed in a lot of ways, <laughs> a lot of different ways. He was dead and brought back, um, which I think brought character to it and made it interesting. Um, kind of stupid, but also, like, good in a way. Like, I was like, all right, I like this. Uh, so for him, nine or ten. I really like the Christopher Lee Dracula. Um, you can tell when it was made by the quality and the acting that it was totally 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever. And I think that just adds to it. It's not perfect, but I like it. The next Dracula is Luke Evans from Dracula Untold. He's also a 9 or 10 for me because I saw this movie when it came out as a birthday present from one of my friends at the time. And I always felt a connection to it like that. And it's it's not a bad movie. It does not go off the book per se. It goes more off of him being based on Vlad the Impaler, um, which many believe is who he's based off of. And uh, so it goes more into that and the backstory rather than him going after Mina and Lucy. Like, that's that's not the storyline of this. And it's pretty good. And they end it in a way where you think there's going to be a second movie. They never make one. It's so sad. But I do like the special effects in this movie. I do like the story of it and how he's doing it to save his family. Um, that's how he became a vampire. Um, so for me, 9 or 10. And finally... The most iconic Dracula, Bela Lugosi, who played Dracula in multiple different ways, but is more known for his role in the 1931 Dracula. And he felt so connected to the character, he was actually buried in the Dracula costume, which is awesome. He gets a 10 out of 10, or a thousand out of 10, or a million out of 10. He is by far the best Dracula ever, because he was the first, and if you think that Nosferatu's Dracula, you're wrong. And, uh, I'll tell you in the video that is, uh, carded here, um, no. Nosferatu is not a part of this list because he doesn't count. Bela Lugosi is the most iconic Dracula. He was the first Dracula. He just did a really good job. When people think of Dracula and basing a character, you know, basing their portrayal of Dracula, they base it off of Bela Lugosi's performance. He was Dracula incarnate. He started this whole franchise of different movies and all kinds of that, things like that. It, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So Bela Lugosi, 10 out of 10. Million out of 10. Trillion out of 10. He's glorious. Now you might not agree with me. You might not think he's the best Dracula. Maybe he isn't. But he was the first Dracula. Nosferatu doesn't count. Don't even say he does because he doesn't. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I had a really good time rating my favorite Draculas. Um, 
well, favorite Draculas, raiding Draculas. If you'd like, I could do a part two of movie Draculas or do a part two where I just go over TV show Draculas because there are a few people who have played Dracula in different television shows. And I think that'd be pretty interesting too. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Comment down below if you agree with my suggestions or comment what you think, like what you would rate them. Maybe you don't even know about these Draculas and I've taught you something new and maybe you're gonna marathon Dracula movies. It's a fun time. I've seen very many, very many Dracula movies. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed. I'll be back again on Thursday with another True Crime Thursday, a Monday with whatever I decide to post. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Whew.